In this video, I will explain the Catalonian issue. In case you don't know, Catalonia is in the northeast area of Spain. The flag without the star means a Catalonia in Spain, and with the star, a Catalonia out of Spain as an independent country. Most of the problems of Spain come from the years of the conquest of the Iberian Peninsula by the Christian. When a territory was conquered, the king gave that territory to one of his knights. Due to the conquer process, this gave the result of small landowners in the north and big landowners in the south. Time passed, and the Industrial Revolution came. In the north, people were thrilled with the use of machines. But in the south, landowners had a huge amount of labor force, and they kept power in their lands being the only war providers there, so they rejected the machines. So the king started to tax profit gain from people in the north to subsidize the inefficient agriculture of the south. It was okay at first, since being part from Spain, the Catalonian could export huge amount of products to the Spanish colonies, especially to Cuba, so everybody happy. But then the United States took over Cuba, and the Catalonian export stopped. And the Catalonians started to be concerned about being part of Spain, which implied wealth distribution to the south. This was a common thing, as the years went by. During the First World War, for example, the Catalonian industry had a huge push thanks to the neutrality of the Spanish king. The king was removed and a republic was established, where left-center parties had an important power. The new rulers understood the problem. They drafted a law to make Catalonian people happy keeping them in Spain and tried to reform the inefficient economy from the south. This, of course, pissed off the landowners from the south. As a democratic system, elections were a common thing, and parties from the extreme right which at that time were Nazi lovers, took power. They started to piss off Catalonian people, taking good care of the south land owners. So Catalonia took the decision of being independent, and just for a little time, a Catalonian country was created. The workers asked for guns and ammo to defend the new country from the Spanish army intervention, but the businessmen didn't agree with that, since it was probable that they used those guns to start a revolution and end capitalism. So the politicians refused to provide these guns, and the Spanish army conquered the new country with almost no effort, and put it back in Spain again. Then elections again, and the left, which was more extreme now than before, took power again. This pissed off the army, and a civil war started. Lots of people died, among them communist, socialist, anarchist, and the independentists from Catalonia were wiped out. The Catalonian language was banned, and independence was no longer an issue for Turkey, otherwise you would be arrested and probably killed. The dictatorial regime lasted almost 40 years, and thanks that the USA didn't bomb Spain because there is no oil, Spain made its way to democracy. The central power of the dictatorial regime was reformulated, now regions from Spain could have their own regional governments to deal with their issues. Some regions received more power based on its history. And Catalonia recovered the power that was taken from it by the dictatorial regime. In the central government, Spain has the Spanish right and left parties, as every country, and the regional parties from the right and the left. Since the two big parties don't get on well, they have to deal with regional parties to run the central government when they don't get enough votes to do it by themselves. And this is important, because the right and left Catalonian parties set aside their difference and push for more regional power in the Spanish parliament. So the Spanish right party can come to an agreement with the right Catalonian parties to rule the country, and the Spanish left party can reach an agreement also with the right Catalonian party or the left Catalonian party since leftist people are more open-minded. These agreements are also important in the Catalonian Parliament, where the picture is different, since the Spanish parties usually have less power than regional ones, so it's a common thing, the chain of power for support. In 2006, the Spanish left party got an agreement with the right Catalonian party for passing a law to give more power to the Catalonian and reconfigure the fiscal policy, letting them to deal with some taxes instead of the central government. So more money from the Catalonian taxpayers will remain in Catalonia. Among other things, also gave own political power over the judges to Catalonia. The Spanish right party should this law, and the Spanish judge cancelled some articles, among them this thing of the judges. Then the crisis came, and lots of corruption scandals began to appear. 
Well, starting with the crisis, Spanish public debt and Catalonian public regional debt skyrocketed. So the argument about sending Catalonian taxpayer money to the south started again. Usually the Spanish left party is the best dealing with that, but the failure of the Keynesian economies against the crisis destroyed the Spanish left party. So now we have the right party dealing the issue with the Catalonian right party, the Catalonian left party and an extreme left party. This last one was needed to be majority in the Catalonian parliament. That is the very first thing you need if you want to push for a declaration of independence. So if you are looking for a place where businessmen which are in the right Catalonian party are working together with the communist Cambodian Cremagus type, Catalonian is that place. How can it be? Well, we have to take a look to other piece of the puzzle, the corruption. Right parties at national and regional level and the royal family in Spain are corrupted. Also left parties, but it is a joke in comparison with the right parties. And in Spain, politics can influence judges. So when a politic from a national party is prosecuted, the judge can be changed, moved or fired. That is right. There is no such a thing as a power separation. It used to be before, but not now. There is a book in Spain where Spanish whistleblowers say how political power to cover judicial power. So right Catalonian politics is sold the masses with the slogan Spain steals Catalonian taxpayers. But maybe they are thinking about how good it will be to have power over Catalonian judges to confront charges for corruption. And last, but by far the most important thing that has created this point of not return status is our friend the devil. Well, I mean, the central banking. The Spanish government can borrow money from private investors. And then this private investor will take the debt bond to the central bank, who will just print the money out of thin air, creating inflation. So thanks to this scam, Spanish debt bonds has a good acceptance in the markets. But Catalonian regional debt bonds are not accepted, so they cannot participate in this scam. And for that, private investors don't want them. But if Catalonia was independent, then it will have a Catalonian central bank and the Catalonian government could also print money out of thin air to erase the debt, creating inflation and harming poor people. In fact, the Catalonian movement is a little the calf, since they don't mind to be part of a macro state called Europe in the future, although not all the groups think like that. So while the population is running worst, the story is the same. Every time you start watching plugs and patriotic thoughts hailed by naive regular people behind the scenes, the reality is always the same. Private interests trying to use the public resources to enrich themselves and get away with it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe, although most of my videos are in Spanish.